Today, I'd like to present RGB droids that utilize response-based security mechanism in order to handle privilege escalation attack on Android. Uh, I would like to focus on three main points in this talk. First, I will talk about the seriousness of privilege escalation attacks, especially on Android. Uh, second, the difference between prevention-based security and response-based security will be introduced. Third, I will point out that native le level mechanism of Android is static by analyzing Android behavior. RGB Droid adopts response-based security widely using such static characteristic of Android. The effectiveness of RGB Droid will be presented. First, in order to inter introduce the magnitude of threat of privilege escalation attacks, I will show you malicious code that actually perform privilege escalation attack. Droid Kung Fu is one of the Android malicious code that attacks the system using privilege escalation. Uh, Droid Kung Fu extracts machine information from a user terminal through the to search report code in the slide. Uh, the information shown in the box of the left side of the slides are structured such as IMEI, OS type, OS API, etc. This information is transferred to the server of the, of the URL in the right side and used for an attacker to identify the corresponding terminal. And then the get permission three is a function to execute, execute the split code that is used for the actual privilege escalation attack. Droid Kung Fu contains Android privilege escalation attack code called Rage Against the Cage, made by Syskill, and executes the code in the get permission three function. The code is encrypted by AES before execution and is, is decrypted when execution of the code is needed. If the root privilege is hijacked through, through privilege escalation attack, Droid Kung Fu installs additional uh, malicious app called Google Ad Search. It's located in each own asset directory without user's knowledge. This is installation is done simply by copying APK file, Android installation file, into system app directory. Install the additional malicious program Google Ad Search makes user's terminal as a malicious bot. Uh, this board is operated according to the instructions from the attacker designated CNC server, and the instructions are listed in the middle of the slide. Especially, such installation of a random program is very dangerous because it is installed without the user's knowledge. Uh, in addition, there is an instruction to erase a specific file. Such instruction is a big threat to a system because it can erase antivirus program. In this way, Droid Kung Fu can perform very dangerous attack through privilege escalation attack, and it is evident that it is a big threat to Android terminal users. Besides, there are various malicious codes that perform privilege escalation attacks, such as Droid Dream or Ginger Master, etc. These malicious codes also perform similar attacks at Droid Kung Fu and have additional functionalities, such as detection avoidance and self-defense to increase analytical complexity. Next, we analyze the root privilege usage pattern on Android platform. Uh, log is monitored by hooking system call, and PPID, PID, process name, UID, UID, file to access information is recorded. The log captured in the slide shows that live C.so file is continuously accessed in order to the share process. The log is recorded with the RGB droid turned on when one of the privilege escalation attacking code called ginger break is executed. It shows that after the privilege escalation attack is successful, the attacking code tries to open shell. However, shell ex execution fails and therefore it continues to attempt executing shell. Actually, in the experiment, gingerbreak binary generates routine failure message because shell is not executed by RGB droid. In this way, by using log record through system call hooking, we find that processes that are using root privilege are determined, and also those collecting and analyzing information of system resources 
that are accessed by digital process, we found the method that can be utilized to respond to privilege escalation attack. In other words, we prepared the policy to respond to attacks using the Android features that root privilege privileges are limitedly used only by specific program. Now, I will compare between response-based approach and the prevention-based approach. Security policies that block inappropriate system accesses through restricting behaviors of a program and controlling resource accesses such as App Armor or SE Linux can be considered as prevention-based security policies. Prevention-based security policies incur significant overhead, as shown in the table. This overhead is measured uh, using Atom Bench by Hitachi Laboratory in Japan. It's especially the result colored by yellow showed significant overhead. The reason why prevention-based security policies incur significant overhead is because they should prevent potential attacks and vulnerabilities, which requires prediction. Actually, client prevention-based security system partially prevent known attacks in most cases, and they are not perfect. Because prevention-based approach needs prediction, predicting attackers' possible adverse actions, it requires to monitor a large part of system events from the implementation point of view. Such intensive monitoring and tracing can lead to significant overhead. In addition, currently available prevention-based solutions such as SE Linux and FArmor does not have clear target adverse actions, actions or target vulnerabilities that they are aiming to prevent. According to software complexity theory, there are research reports that higher software, software complexity tends, tends to incur more software bugs and vulnerabilities. In fact, SE Linux has complex security policies and is complicated to use. More complex policy lead to more complicated implementation. In reality, it has been reported that SE Linux and F Armor become incapacitated in PREC Volume 66 and Shimacon 2011. Now let's just look into response-based approach. In response-based approach, we suppose the system is compromised by an attacker. In that situation, we define adverse actions with the consideration of the features of the system environment, and then respond to them using such environmental characteristics. Let me present P whitelist as an example of a response-based approach. P whitelist is one of the secret policies adopted in RGB Droid. An attacker who hijacked Android system can execute shell, random binaries that the attackers made, or various system instructions. Through such execution, the attacker can install backdoor, for example. In addition, attackers usually attempt to acquire shells to vulnerabilities on general. Shell is a program that helps the interaction between user and system. In other words, it is a program to be used for humans. Android security policy does not allow users to directly use root privileges, and root privileges can be restrictively used by some design generated programs. In other words, shell execution with root privilege after initial booting process can be considered as malicious actions. These malicious actions can be grouped as actions that execute, execute something with root privilege. In other words, program execution with root privileges can be considered as malicious actions except some degenerated programs that are allowed to be executed with root privilege. Therefore, in order to respond to such actions, we manage some programs that are allowed to use root privilege in whitelist and disallow disall other programs to be executed with root privileges. As I, as I will explain later in this talk, this response-based security policy has clear target malicious actions that it is aiming to block and security policies that aim to respond to each malicious action incorporate complementarily creating a synergy effect. I will deal with this part in more detail in the later section of this talk, and let me talk about RGB Droid that adopts such response-based security policies. RGB Droid uses, uses Android features that Linux part works statically. For example, 
The process that use root privilege, root privilege are determined and there are system resources that are not needed to be mod modified. The figure in this slide shows the schematic overview of RGB droid that is designed using such features. RGB droid restricts resource accesses by system call hooking. It performs hooking open and write system call functions. And security policies called the P-white list and critical list are applied to each of the hook system call functions res respectively. RGB droid leads malicious actions to failure in the target system by restricting resource accesses. In order to achieve this, we needed to classify resources in Android Linux. We classified them into two categories as shown in the slide. Based on UID value of 10,000 resources with higher than the value R user resources and that with lower than the value R system resources. User resources examples are user program generated information such as contact information, text information, etc. And system resource examples are host file or Android framework file, etc. Uh, in order to respond to malicious actions with the uh, consideration of resource classification and environmental, environmental features, RGB Droid uses response-based uh, policies of P whitelist and critical list. P whitelist is a program list that can use root privileges. Any program not listed in the list is not allowed to use root privileges. Programs in client whitelist are mostly daemons that provide various services in Android. In order to implement the mechanism, p whitelist applies the algorithm shown at the bottom of the slide to open system call function. The operation is simple. Any processes that access to specific resources with root privilege is tested whether it is in the whitelist or not. And depending on the test result, the request for resource access is allowed or disallowed. If processes that are not listed in the whitelist are executed with root privileges, the access to required library files that are necessary to execute a program, such as a live C.so file, are also denied, and therefore the attempts to execute the program fails. Next is critical list. Critical list prohibits. Uh, Manipulating critical system resources that can occur serious malicious actions if manipulated and that do not need to be modified. By using critical list, RGB Droid responds to an attempt to manipulate system resources to perform attacks such as a managed code rootkit by an attacker. In the middle of the slide, you can see the important system resources that RGB Droid currently protects. The first one is a directory or Android Java libraries and the second one is for host file, and the third one is for native libraries. In order to protect the resources, crit critical list applies the algorithm shown in the bottom of the slide to write system call. This algorithm denies access to resource with root privilege if the resource is listed in the critical list. Uh, <coughs> by this way, critical system resource can be protected. Now, I'd like to show the experimental result that is our present which attacks are effectively responded. This slide includes p-whitelist experiments. Most of Android malicious applications using privilege escalation attacks in Android try to execute a shell program with root privilege in order to maintain their temporarily seized root privilege. If the execution of the shell program with root privilege is no permitted, the attacker cannot maintain root privilege continuously, and the privilege escalation attack eventually fails. And I think that through this manner, we can protect compromising the Android completely by attacker. And failing a condition root shell is also able to protect most malicious application with privilege escalation attacks in Android. In summary, by restrict arbitrary binary execution, attacker can't compromise the Android, Android completely and attack also can't do one of the effective malicious behaviors. And it makes attacker to harder by increasing attack complexity. The figure in the slide shows that various interactions are executed before RGB droid is applied.
However, after the RGB droid is applied, the shell execution fails. In addition, because all executions that are not listed in the whitelist fails, attackers cannot execute random binaries even after they succeed to acquire root privilege. Next is experimental result of a critical list. We, we tested based on Venus code root kit. If we manipulate late forger file in system framework directory, DNS spoofing is possible as shown in the left side of the slide. It connects to neighbor.com if a connection to victim.com is tried. The attacker experiment, attack, the attack experiment tries to replace the original core jar with a manipulated core jar under the situation that an attacker hijacked the root privilege. Through, through these actions, the DNS spoofing is possible as shown in the slide. After the RGB droid is applied, you can see that the attempt for the manipulation files with the error message of, of operation not permitted as shown at the bottom of the slide. Such attacks that replace system resources as a managed code root kit are blocked throughout this security mechanism. As shown in this experiment, RGB droid can protect the system against the privilege escalation attacks by effective responding to random binary execution with root privilege and to system resource manipulation. Furthermore, an attacker can perform adverse actions using the process vulnerabilities in P white list, even if uh, an attacker can control the an execution flow of a trusted process because the attacker cannot manipulate the system resources in reality and cannot execute random binaries as shown, actual adverse actions are practically restricted. In other words, even though the attack scenario that the control flow of the processes in the P whitelist is controlled by attacker is not considered in the RGB droid design stage, each of the security policies against each of the adverse actions cooperate complementarily, creating a synergy effect that can protect against the unexpected malicious action. Now let's focus the performance evaluation of RGB droid. Here we present the performance measurement using TPS. Android's storage performance evaluation program called Android Bench is used. This program performs insert, update, delete databases operations and report performance measurement result by the count of the transactions that are processed per second. As you can see, 6.2, 6.7, overhead occurred for each of the three operations after applying RGB droid. The performance evaluation is the measurement of the time in second after, the, after executing insert, update, delete operations 300 times for each in Android bench. The overall processing time increasing are 6.2, 6.7, and 8.4% for each of the three operations. Overall overhead of all three operations is 7%. Considering the coverage of malicious actions that RGB droid can respond, the 7% performance overhead is estimated to be acceptable. The small performance of overhead to Small performance overhead in RGB droid is due to relatively less needs, needs more for monitoring or tracing by defining possible adverse actions precisely with the consideration of environmental features. And by applying security policies that respond to the corresponding adverse action instead of considering all potential vulnerabilities and possible attacks as conventional prevention policies usually do. In addition, because RGB droid attempts to respond instead of prevent, it does not need to consider how a vulnerability can be maliciously used. Therefore, it can reduce performance overhead and its security policy is relatively not as complex as prevention-based approach. Furthermore, Android has multiple layer as platform structure and the users use terminal through the interaction with Android application in the uppermost layer. That is to say, when RGB droid applies security restrictions that incur small, small performance overhead in Android Linux layer, because the users using terminal cannot recognize that RGB droid is performing, and because the application of the security restriction do not affect the higher layer platform behaviors. So usability is not affected by the security restriction. 
In conclusion, our recent Android malicious code, code makes the user terminal into a board by privilege escalation attack. Besides, the privilege escalation attack become a serious threat considering the better adverse actions are possible if the root privileges are used. We presented response-based security policies that can minimize the effect of system performance and usability as well as effectively respond to privilege escalation attack. Especially, response-based policies is very suitable security approach in Android environment, and we expect that response-based security approach can cast new insight into other security researches as well as Android. Thank you very much. I am curious. I understand that your approach at the moment protects against exploits that are known. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen when adversaries become aware of your techniques? Um, can you explain again? Can so if a bad guy knows yeah. that the phone is protected by your system, yes. what can he do to circumvent it? Uh, I don't want to be rude to you, Niels, but uh, maybe we should take the break and you can discuss that offline. Okay, sure. All right. So the, we should be back from the break at 3.40. That's, according to my clock, in 20 minutes. Just a little shorter break than planned. Thanks. <laughs>